Finally, I'm done with this studio rebuild. It has taken me about a month to do it, and there's a lot going on in this room. So I'm excited to tell you that I'm finally done with all the construction and the building and the figuring things out. I designed this studio space exactly the way that I wanted it to work out. I'm gonna show you some of the cool things that I did here and some of the cool things that some companies and friends have helped me with. Uh, let's start with the most important piece of this studio, and that is this beautiful desk. The wood is reclaimed kiln dried black walnut from New Prairie Woodworks in Missouri. Uh, Missouri, so it's Missouri hardwood. This guy, Tom Martin, he, that's his company. He took the wood and he sent it to Conrad over at Hillbilly Hills in Missouri. I know the name is a little backwoodsy, but it's okay. They do this awesome custom furniture. Um, I sent over basically the dimensions that I needed and I said, hey, I need black, I want a black walnut desk. And I sent him a drawing of what I wanted. And I said, I need it to be 24 by about 60. And he said, do you want it to be live edge? Uh, that means that the, the edge, this edge here is not perfectly flat. It is, it kind of contours with the, you know, where the tree bark was and the edge of the tree. So it, it just creates this really beautiful edge on the desk. This desk is super important to my workflow because it's also on wheels. I can move it around or just move it out of the frame if I need to. And so, you know, I don't actually need to use the desk for my videos, but I wanted a nice desk, a nice tabletop for, you know, product photography. I couldn't have asked for something more beautiful than what Hillbilly Hills has crafted here. I also have six matching shelves on the bottom of the desk and all from the same tree. Everyone who's seen it in person has just been I don't know, flabbergasted. Now the pipes that you see here, they were supplied by Simplified Building. They are the key clamp pipes. They, they are very thick, very heavy duty steel pipes. Now I've seen a few other people create similar designs of you know pipe and wood desks um, using either Brooklyn pipes or you know other style twist on pipes that you have to basically twist the entire frame around to get it just right. Um, and it's they're a little bit harder to work with. I went with the key clamp pipes. So I'm halfway through building this thing and I just realized I should be building it upside down. So I turned it over and I put the top of the table onto the ground because I don't have the tabletop yet and I'm going to have to install that, but I need it to be a completely flat and level surface. So the thing I like the most about these key clamp things is they all have these built-in keyed nuts that are already on all the attaching pieces. So you just take the little Allen wrench and you screw it on. And then once that little nut is tightened into place, it'll take 2000 pounds of force to move it. So it's like it's welded. And it's really easy to just undo it and then adjust it if you need to. So right now it's like, it's not going anywhere. And then you can move it around as needed. I'm gonna try and unload this thing and get it set up. moment I was feeling personally pretty defeated because I forgot to measure for the distance that those pipes, the thickness of the pipes would consume and the shelves were too big. But then I remembered that the pipes are just completely adjustable. I could loosen the Allen wrench and then just add a little slack. And so that's what I did. So I decided after I put the wood on the actual pipes that the shelves, I wanted to adjust them a little bit. And if I used any other kind of pipe where I had to twist it in and lock it in permanently, I couldn't do it because the key clamps are completely adjustable and stuff. You know, it's just. Also, I got a bunch of these clips uh, that are basically really thick metal uh, that are it's designed for sheet metal. But I wanted to use these to attach the wood to the pipes. I didn't want the the wood shelves just kind of freestanding on there uh, because they might, you know, I don't, I don't like that. I want everything to be secured. 
but this this is way too hard to bend which is good but it's also not what I needed for my shelves instead I went to Home Depot and I, I spent 10 bucks on a bunch of these things which are a little bit easier to bend uh, with a vise and a wrench and I was able to use these to attach all of my shelves so if you're trying to do a similar design to mine, just keep that in mind and maybe you can save some money if you just buy these off of that. The wheels, I was concerned about the weight limits. These casters are rated for a combined weight total of 840 pounds. I don't think I'm ever gonna be putting, you know, 800 pounds on this desk. The desk itself weighs about 150 to 175 pounds with all the wood and all the steel combined. The other reason this desk is so important to my workflow, I'm also gonna be using it as my work desk for when I'm editing videos or doing my day job, which is software and code. So when I'm done with my videos, I'm just gonna wheel it over there. So I just stick it right here and there we go. Ready to get to work. I've got the DDS Mic 2 and the HDTX up here. And I found that when you are updating the firmware for the DD HDTX, if you are on a VPN and you set your location to the UK and you go to Didi's website, you'll get the international firmware option. The US version can't transmit and record at the same time due to patent laws, but the UK version, uh, it can. So if you just VPN yourself into the UK and then you go to Didi's website to grab the firmware update, you'll get the international firmware and then the HDTX will also have the transmit and record simultaneous options. And uh, also the firmware 2.0 lets you use the HDTX as an audio interface. So you can just plug an XLR mic into your computer and select it as your computer's microphone. So that's what I'm doing with the HDTX. Now let me show you the cable management that I did down here. I think I might put a piece of wood in front of all this stuff just to kind of hide it. I don't know yet. Ta-da! I wanted everything to look nice and tidy whenever my desk was over there. So I uh, kind of built a little shelf here for it, kind of plywood and some reclaimed board from a pallet rack. I think it looks pretty nice. Obviously another important piece of kit here that I had to build for the studio and it's on wheels is this uh, microphone stand using the Rode PSA-1 boom arm, a little rapid clamp adapter, a Bebop V-mount plate with USB out power so I can power my MixPre-3 with the V-mount batteries. That was a super important component for me. This design is inspired by none other than DSLR video shooter, Caleb Pike. He kind of made something like this and it seems like all the people who have, you know, kind of dedicated studio spaces end up eventually building something like it uh, or something exactly like it or something very similar. Uh, so this is my iteration on it and I'm, I, I love it. It really makes getting around and setting up the microphone a whole lot easier and it just kind of folds up out of the way when you're done with it. Another really important piece for my studio, uh, obviously, is lighting. I've got the Lupo Super Panel Full Color 60 on the Rolling Baby Combo Stand from B&H Photo, it's uh, the Impact brand. I'm also using a rolling stand for the microphone stand that you saw from Impact. Impact is uh, b and Photo's grip brand. But let's talk about wall mounts because uh, lighting and wall mounts and everything, you know that I love walls and wheels. You may remember that I like the Falcon Eyes uh, RX818 as a top light that I had in my old studio. So it's still my top light here. I'm using the same stand. Uh, it's just, it's gonna be more useful now because I have an actual nice table to highlight and put stuff on. Check this out. So if I need to do like product photography, Beautiful soft top light for product photography. That took all of what, five seconds? Here, I'll take a photo of this real quick. There, and now it's my top light for videos again. So super functional. I've got a couple other lights that I've got wall mounted up here. I've got the Aperture 120D Mark II as my key light over there. Another Aperture 120D Mark II as my backlight with the Fresnel attachment and barn doors. And then I still have the Kane TV Bolton Andromeda Slim Tube over here. Yeah, so we've got the Falcon Eyes RX818. We've got the Kane TV Bolton Andromeda Slim Tube. We've got the Aperture 120D Mark II with a softbox and a grid. Uh, we've got the sound stand. My camera's over there recording me. We've got the Lupo Super Panel Full Color 60 there on the impact stand. 
Then we have another 120D Mark II up there with the Fresnel and the barn doors. And of course, finally, the gear closet. It used to just be a regular bedroom closet with the sliding doors in it. I tore all that out. We added uh, some electrical outlets here so I can have a battery docking station where I charge all my VMAT batteries and all my camera batteries. And I also custom designed and built all these shelves myself so I could have everything at arm's reach, you know, without having to, you know, dive and dig through a bunch of boxes and stuff. So I'm really happy with how these shelves turned out. I'm happy with how the whole studio turned out. I'm not gonna go through all my gear or anything because if you've been watching my channel, you've probably seen it all already. Finally, the backdrop. I wanted something a little bit different than what I had been doing, which is just, you know, sound foam everywhere. So I went with a, a Savage paper backdrop, which was, it's just the ultramarine. It's like a nice dark tealy blue color. So I needed to figure out a way to, you know, obviously mount the paper. And I didn't want to have anything that was like a permanent C-stand because that's just too much floor space. And this being a relatively small bedroom, basically I needed to conserve as much space as possible because when you have more space to be creative, you're, it's just easier to create stuff. So I went with the impact very pole system, which is basically just a couple poles that you, you know, crank up and down onto the ceiling and then it holds a ton of weight. I almost wasn't able to get this done right because this light here is mounted uh, onto the stud and the paper I got was 86 inches and it's like 87 inches to the end of the wall there and I didn't plan ahead for that. So it took a lot of very careful patience to get everything to fit just perfectly. So a couple of really important components showed up to the uh, studio rebuild today. Uh, these are super clamps. And if you're not familiar with super clamps, these are some of the most useful tools um, that you can have in like a home studio. And I wanna thank B&H Photo for sending these out, by the way. They, they actually sent out a few really important components that I'm gonna need for this rebuild. All right, this is an impact very pole. All right, so right now it's off the wall. Ratchet it down, clamped. And I got two of them. You don't have to deal with like drilling stuff into your walls or anything. Not that I'm against drilling stuff into your walls. I've done it a lot, but I just have an excessive amount of holes. I just wall mounted my computers because I want my desk to roll under them. But then I realized I have to move those computers about six inches up because I didn't uh, make them high enough for the desk that I custom built. I was like, this is gonna be perfect, but you know, whatever, we'll get there. This is my Savage paper backdrop that I ordered. I ordered it in ultramarine, 12 yards by 86 inches or something like that. This is gonna be the new color of my background in my studio. And I think it's going to kind of bring everything together along with the different wood accents and the custom shelving and everything that I built. So let's put this up and see how it looks. I may have measured incorrectly and uh, it's gonna be really tight. So hope this works. Oh, and sound treatment. Obviously there are better ways to treat your studio than with sound foam, but I already had sound foam available and so that's what I used. Um, I would probably like to get some nice sound panels in here. Uh, I know that there's a lot of reverb. I'm not doing professional voiceover and you know, some people actually prefer the sound of a live room with a little bit of reverb. I, I mean, I personally like the sound of everything being completely dead, but it's just uh, it's just a different sound, and it kind of it kind of sounds nice having a little bit of life in here. Uh, maybe you agree, maybe you disagree. Let me know in the comments. But that is the basic tour of my new studio setup, uh, my workspace where I edit everything that I do for YouTube moving forward for at least the next you know year or so. Uh, so let me know what you guys think. Th thank you guys for you know subscribing and watching and putting up with me. And thanks, I want to say a huge thank you to everyone that's helped make this kind of unexpected timing of a studio rebuild, you know, make it possible. Hillbilly Hills, New Prairie Woodworks, Simplified Building, b &H Photo, and everyone that's sent me gear to review, uh, you know, for the past couple of years and also even moving forward. Just, uh, I'm incredibly grateful and um, it just means so much to me that you guys appreciate what I'm doing enough to support me. So thank you. I'll see you guys in the next one.